basically what this means is that if you are going to be emulating or if you're going to be attempting to emulate the nintendo switch you need to have a flagship phone <laughs> Boom. Hello and welcome to another video. I'm here to talk about Nintendo Switch emulation for smartphones. Smartphones, uh, when I say smartphones, I mean Androids. Androids, Android based smartphones or phones running Android software. So um, let's talk about the Nintendo Switch. The Nintendo Switch is a uh, hybrid, it's a hybrid console. It's, a, it's, it's basically, it's, it, it can be handheld. But it can also be, you know, docked, connected to a TV or monitor, or even, you know, like better performance and all that. And uh, it was released uh, in sometime in 2017. I've forgotten the exact month, but it was released sometime in 2017. And right this moment, as we speak, uh, from my research, it is the third best-selling gaming console of all time, beating very illustrious names like the PlayStation 3, the PlayStation 1, the Xbox 360, the Dreamcast. The Dreamcast was a failure. <laughs> uh, I think the, the PlayStation 2 is still the greatest, um, the highest selling console of all time. I hope it stays the highest selling console of all time. I am a Sony fanboy. <laughs> yes, I am not hiding that fact. I'm a Sony fanboy. But, um, you know, for the sake of science and all that, let's, let's talk Nintendo today. Personally, myself, I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of Nintendo, to be honest. I really don't like their practice of, you know, um, what's it called now, of suing. I mean, they've got They've, they've got their technology so locked down, so tight that many huge creators are afraid of even mentioning the name Nintendo so that they don't get slammed with a lawsuit. Like, you know, bang, lawsuit, sue you to hell. Like, how dare you? That kind of stuff. Like, I don't really like that about Nintendo, to be honest. I'm not here to slam them anywhere. I mean, I already, <laughs> I'm, I'm already, I, I'm already slamming them somewhat. But one thing I would give Nintendo their flowers for is the fact that they've brought, um, what's the word to use now? They've brought variety to the gaming scene. Now, without Nintendo, I think Nintendo has done a lot to bring casual gamers, you know, I think somewhat the way smartphones have done, but Nintendo have also done a lot to bring casual gamers into like the gaming sphere, you know, so that we can all talk games and then we can all like have a shared experience or something. Because without Nintendo, you'd see uh, uh, the PlayStation, for example, or the Xbox, they want to go all out on AAA titles that, you know, the other ordinary person on the street can't get into with super advanced next gen hardware and all that stuff. So. This is when Nintendo comes in. Nintendo says, you know what? Keep chasing the high end. We're going to be here for those people who need us. And it's brought good variety. So even if you don't want to play AAA titles on next-gen hardware, you can get decent hardware from Nintendo, which is the Switch, right? Which is the Switch. You can get decent hardware there and you can play. And Nintendo is really, the Nintendo Switch is really popular. I know someone, a friend of mine, who bought Nintendo Switch just to play Animal Crossing. <laughs> I kid you not. That was all she bought it for. Animal Crossing. There are also some other like very very nice titles. Like first party titles from Nintendo like Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, uh, all of the Pokemon games and then uh, not just the Pokemon games, Super Mario, Super Mario Deluxe, Super Mario Kart and then not just that there's also great games. Triple A titles from third party developers like The Witcher, No Man's Sky, um, FIFA 23 Legacy, the whole raft of FIFA games over there. Like there are lots of very very good titles on the Nintendo Switch. So the next question that we want to, I, I want to ask, or I want to feel this like, why should I bother? Like you know, oh it's self evident really. First and foremost, the Nintendo Switch is still being supported. Although I'm hearing that it's going to be phased out quite soon, but it's still being supported as of this moment. This video has been made. It's still being supported by its parent company, which means that there are still new games being made for it. So if you can emulate the Switch on your smartphone, it means that you get to play these games, right? Without having to, and that's the second reason, without having to fork out a lot of money for buying a Nintendo Switch. Because basically, um, I'll get to that. I'll get to the specifications and the hardware part. You don't have to like bring out all that money, you know, to go and get a new Nintendo Switch, right? So let's go on to what you should know about the emulation of the Nintendo Switch. Very important. Now, some industry experts and insiders have made fun of the Nintendo Switch for having low-end hardware and for the most part they're not wrong really they're not wrong they're not wrong at all because the nintendo switch uses an nvidia tegra x1 right which is a quad core soc with four cortex a53 cpu cores i kid you not four cortex a53 cpu cores running at 1.02 gigahertz with a maxwell tegra x1 gpu now those four arm cortex a53 cpu cores are the equivalent of what you get you know on a dirt chip very low-end bottom of the earth the earth's crust 
down below core like it's that low an android phone that's what basically what you get on that one like it's that low but what most people fail to point out is the fact that the um the Tegra X1 Maxwell, that's the GPU on the Nintendo Switch, is actually a very good GPU, at least for its time. Now it's no longer what it used to be, but for its time, it was actually like really good. It's a powerful GPU. Um, <clears throat> it's on the same level as the GPU. Uh, let, let's let's compare. You can compare it to GPUs like the Adreno 640 and the Adreno 650 that you'd find on SOCs like the Snapdragon 855, 855 Plus, 860, um, 865, 865 Plus, 870, or uh, let's say the Mali, um, the Mali G7 seven mp11 that you find on the exynos 990 or the um mali g77 mc9 that you'd find on the dimensity 8050 the dimensity 1200 dimensity 1300 and so on and so forth like it's actually really powerful now these gpus i've mentioned the adreno 640 650 uh, mali g77 mp11 mc9 are a grade I've made a list of top 100 smartphone GPUs. I'm going to leave a link uh, in the comments and as well, in, as well as the description so you can go and scroll through to see how, like, to see what I'm talking about. Hopefully, it will be, it will be on the screen as well. Like, the GPU on the uh, Nintendo Switch is actually very powerful, and which is why many games that are made for Nintendo Switch have, you know, the nice graphic looks, like the nice graphics and the polygons and all that that it has because games on the Nintendo Switch are more um, GPU tasking, GPU reliant than what you, than you know than cpu the cpu is just there to handle like basic functions it's the gpu that actually you know does the heavy lifting on the nintendo switch so basically what this means is that if you are going to be emulating or if you're going to be attempting to emulate the nintendo switch you need to have a flagship phone or at least one of the newer upper mid-range phones like something like a uh, snapdragon 7 gen 2 7 plus gen 2 or let's say dimensity 8050 even the 8020 would cost it 8050 right if you can't get any of the new upper mid-range SOCs, which means that you've got to go with uh, the exynos 990 and um, the snapdragon 855 855 plus 865 and above all the way up to the snapdragon 8 gen 2 or the dimensity uh dimensity 1000 plus 1100 1200 all the way up to dimensity 9000 it means you need to get something within the flagship class if not you will not be able to emulate on your nintendo switch i mean i have a mid-range phone with a snapdragon 720g and i can play some low end some 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 low end uh nintendo switch games but that's just it low end anything better than low end and my phone is found wanting and i mean i <laughs> i tried i mean i tried using one of the emulators and it almost crashed my phone so that's for that if you've got um a phone that meets its requirements and you've got anything between anywhere between six at the very least but recommended eight gigs of ram anything between eight gigs of ram to 12 gigs of ram space of memory on your smartphone boom you're good to go and then if you're good to go i'm going to recommend two emulators that you can try the first one being skyline and the second one being yuzu now personally i prefer skyline a lot because skyline was made natively for android yuzu on the other hand is you know ported from the pc space you know all the most of the codes were copied and reused and then used to create for android so as a result skyline requires less system resources less ram to run when compared to yuzu skyline can run fine on six gigs of ram Yuzu needs 8 gigs of RAM. At the very least, Skyline can go on 6 gigs. Yuzu requires 8 gigs of RAM. So I tried running Yuzu on my phone that only has 6 gigs of RAM and crashed. Well, that's that's mostly that. So if you can find Skyline on their website, the, the guys who are developing Skyline, you know, once they saw what happened with Dolphin Emulator, they got cold feet and they said, you know what? We don't want this Nintendo hit. We're, we're out here. We're done. We're not playing with this. We, we won't touch this at all. So they just, they just packed up, left the project, and then they... They, they left us with a gift though, the Skyline Edge 69, that's the most stable emulator that they left and then they left their work open so if anybody is interested you can come pick up the work and then carry on, carry on, carry on. But Yuzu are still here, even though they, 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 they just started, they just got in and their app is still not there yet, they are still here and they promised uh, to stay and then help the app develop, to develop the emulation of their app. So um, if you want if you want something more stable right now at this point in time go with skyline but over time i think user is going to catch up and possibly overtake skyline when it comes to optimization development and all that so like i said a phone with six to eight gigs of ram will do so if you've got that the next thing you're going to do you're going to need to download it you download skyline from their github or from their website and then you can download user from play store if you've gotten those then the next thing would be a prod key you need a prod and i think skyline only requires a prod key user requires a prod and title keys so the um the general consensus is for you to get the prod keys and the title keys from a 
switch that you own oh, well i can't say more than that i can't say more than that i, I don't want to get into trouble <laughs> so you know what to do you know what to do you don't have to ask me you know what to do so if you've gotten the product keys and the title keys what you're going to want to do next is that you're going to need to create a folder as per uh, the new uh, 612 anyway so that you need to create specific folders for apps so that they do not have access to your entire you know storage space because it's more safe that way it's more secure that way so you create a folder you title it switch title it skyline title it yuzu so long as you know the name of the folder you're creating create it put the prod and the title keys inside there and boom that's it you're done it's set up it's it's that easy to set up so the next thing would be to source for games and as usual the common speak is you need to dump games that you own and then blah 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 but if you've been watching my previous videos and emulation like i said by now you already know what to do so that's it if you can do all that basically you have successfully emulated uh, the nintendo switch I've, I've basically i emulated it on my <laughs> lower mid-range it's low it's starting to be lower mid-range now um snapdragon 720g smartphone and it does run small games very well but when it comes to the better titles no man's sky which i really wanted to play uh legend of zelda breath of the wild which i actually did download and then didn't run on my phone that was my rude awakening and all that so I, I was unable to play those games because my smartphone did not even meet me any requirements so that is that uh, this video has been a bit long but i wanted to explain myself and then get my point across so with that we've come to the end of this video if you enjoyed this video please give me a like share this video and please subscribe please if you subscribe everything you are going to do this year is going to be perfect for you it's going to breakthrough will find you everything will find you everything good that you're looking for will find you if you subscribe do not ignore my plea to subscribe please subscribe to this video thank you very much and i'll see you in the next one as well as in the comments Bye bye